Jonathan, it's good to uh, good to check in with you here. Uh, you know, the S&P 500 has traded the same 2% or so uh, back and forth about a half dozen times in the last couple days here. How do you think this choppy range is going to resolve? Yeah, you know, so it's it's really a, a perfect um, situation where you've had extreme dispersion below the surface. Um, we know the banks have been kind of front and center. Uh, then you've started to see REITs started to break down, insurance broke down today. And then on the other side of the coin, you have, uh, you know, large cap tech growth, semi software, um, you know, really doing quite well. And so we think it's, it's largely a function of internal rotation. Um, and if you're, uh, you know, a long only money manager with a mandate to be fully invested and you've been selling, you know, cyclical stocks, um, of course, that money is going to find its way into the perceived safe haven of, of large cap growth and, and tech. Um, ultimately, we think, you know, we've been saying this rubber band is stretched. You can look at any number of metrics, uh, small caps to, to NASDAQ, value to growth. It's, it's you know, we're pushing um, decade extremes in some of those ratios. And so, you know, the question is, does it resolve by banks and small caps rallying or by tech and, and growth pulling back? And we think it's the latter. Typically, um, you know, that's how it resolves. Breath continues to narrow, which is what we've seen. And ultimately, the, you know, the loan holdouts finally succumb to the downside. So we think we're closer to that point. Um, and ultimately, that brings the S&P lower from here. Yeah. And, and do you think that we have to be bracing for something that goes below this this lower end of the broader range? I mean, you know, we did hold above like the December lows. Uh, we've, we've managed to, to stay a little bit clear of those October trough levels so far. Yeah, I mean, again, if you look at, you know, something like the equal weight S&P 500, that's still flirting with its December lows. Um, so we do think, you know, for the for the cap weight S&P 500, ultimately the October lows are probably broken. Again, um, you know, there's there's just continued deterioration below the, below the surface. Also today, take a look at the airlines and railroads um, breaking, breaking down. Uh, railroads are back to their October lows, airlines. Um, pretty ugly today. So, you know, all of this deterioration suggests to us that, you know, once you finally get the road, once you get the internal rotations done and technology, you know, finally gets um, pulls back, that's what's going to ultimately drive the S&P lower. And then quickly, uh, gold is catching some attention. It's been flirting with that 2000 level. Uh, it obviously is it kind of been leading the way here among asset classes, although I have to say it's failed a few times around here uh, in the last few years, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, it's it's it has, um, and so if you've been waiting for that breakout, it's been a bit frustrating. But you know, we think now it's kind of setting up as the perfect storm here for gold because you have um, a moderating dollar, and the dollar is falling as expectations of, of rate cuts come into play, right? Um, so you have a falling dollar, which is bullish for gold. You have falling real rates as the uh, economic uh, slowdown picks up steam. So those are two pretty bullish ingredients for gold. Plus, you have some, um, you know, some macro uncertainty, right? So um, we think sure. that's that's constructive. If you look at gold in other currency terms, it's already broken out to multi-year or, or all-time highs. And so um, we do, do we do expect gold to finally break out above 2000. And if and when that finally occurs, that's when you think we think you're going to get um, finally some outperformance in stuff like the gold miners and silver, which have been lagging during this uh, during this gold move. All right. Worth watching. Uh, Jonathan, thanks very much.